Welcome to Chapter 16, Learning How to Use Special Journals, Emphasizing Sales Journals and Cash Receipts Journals. The first thing we need to do is get your problems moved over from the J drive to the F drive. So we'll do that by going down to Start. You go to My Documents. This is your normal routine, J drive. Home, Shared, Common, Accounting 1. We are on to Chapter 16, and then the Chapter 16 folder that says Chapter 16 Problems. You can right mouse click, Copy, and then we go back to our login on the F drive. Look for your Accounting 1 folder, Chapter 16 right mouse click paste and then after you do that you should have your chapter 16 problems folder there. What I'd like you to do is open up problem 16.4 and I'm going to show you how to use the um, sales journal using Excel and then I'm going to show you how to use cash receipts a little bit uh, later on. So if you look at the sales journal, the thing that's nice about this is what used to take us three or four lines, we can now journalize in one line. And we're going to be able to cut the posting by about 66 percent, two-thirds. So the first thing I want you to do is look at the top of your screen. You have a date column, which you had before. Your sales slip is going to be where you recorded the source document. The customer's account that is debited is going to be used here. Posting reference, we'll skip that for right now and we'll come back to it when we go to post. And then you have three columns. One says sales credit, one says sales tax payable credit, and one says accounts receivable debit. So as you can see, this was problem 16.4 that we opened up. However, the wording in the book is a little uh, ambiguous. So what I decided to do is I gave you five, six different transactions on the right-hand side of this sales journal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through them with you and show you how to enter them in the sales journal. And you're going to find, instead of having to use three and four lines for journal entries, we're going to be able to do all of them in one line each. So the first thing we're going to do, just like always, is we're going to go up here to the date. We're going to type that in. And we have the month of September 2nd. Now, this column is used for your sales slip number because all of the transactions that go into the sales journal, as you learned earlier, are for the sale of merchandise only. And it has to be on account. So the source document that's used with that is a sales slip. So we're going to make that one. One. The customer account that is debited would typically be accounts receivable, Ketchum Clothing. But since it's a given that this is going to be accounts receivable, since the sale is on account, you can drop accounts receivable because as you can see over here, you've got a heading that says accounts receivable debit. So we know that whosoever name you put in here is going to be an account receivable. So all we have to do here is type in Ketchum Clothing. We're going to tab past posting reference because we're not posting for right now. And we're going to go to the sales credit column. And this is where you would have credited your sales account. So your sales account is $457.50. That's what we sold in just merchandise. Now it also says plus tax. And it does say at the top, if you look, that the sales tax is 6%. So what we can do for the sales tax is we can put an equation in here, since everybody is going to get charged the same amount of tax, if in fact they are charged a tax. So we'll type equals 0 0.06 times, and we're going to go back and click on the sales credit column. And that's $27.45, which is the amount of the sales tax payable credit. So what's going to happen is your account receivable, Ketchum Clothing, is going to owe you a combination of the sale, the merchandise, 
plus the sales tax. So what we can do here is we can just do an auto sum and hit enter. And that just took care of what you would have normally used four lines for. We did it all in one. So I think you're going to find the sales journal is going to be fairly easy uh, to use here. So if we go to the next one, we have the fifth, 102. And it says, sold merchandise on account to Norton Industries, $345 plus sales tax. So we're going to put Norton Industries in here. Uh, 345 is the sale amount. Now, because we already have a formula up here, we can actually just drag that down. Okay, and we can do the same thing here. This was auto summed, so we can drag that down. So you can see how much quicker it is to do two entries um, in the sales journal versus having to use the general journal. So the next thing we're going to do is the 10th. And that entry says, sold merchandise on account to Jackson City Schools, $426. No sales tax is charged. Sales slip 103. Now, the reason there's no sales tax charged is because schools and churches, non-charitable organizations, they are what we call sales tax exempt, which means we don't charge them sales tax. So we're still going to put in Jackson city schools because they're still going to owe us for the merchandise and it's 426 and what we're going to do is we're just going to put a zero here okay or a dash whatever you end up with if you use um, I think the number I think it will give you zeros there and then we have um, auto sum again so we can just copy down and it gives you the same thing. Okay, so moving right along, the 17th says sold merchandise on account to Riley and Slay CPAs, 552 plus sales tax, sales slip 104. Oops. So we'll put the sale amount in. Now what you have to do is you have to go back up here and copy the formula. You can't use the zeros because there is no formula put in there. And paste. And then this one, we can just copy down. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, leave you for a few minutes. What I want you to do is I want you to do the last two on your own. And then we'll come back when you're ready. You can hit play and you'll be able to check your last two entries. Okay, how did you do? If you check mine, you can see it's the 23rd, 105 Meadowbrook Church, sales credit 453. Sales tax payable zero. You have to put a zero in there. Don't let it blank because then it looks as though you may have skipped it and made a mistake. Um, 453 is the total that they owe us then on their accounts receivable. And then the last one on the 30th is Tang Construction. $512 is your sales credit, the amount of merchandise you sold. Sales tax payable is the $30.72 and then when we add these two together you get $542.72 and that's how you journalize in a sales journal so you can see it's much easier than doing all six of these entries where you would have had probably up to 24 lines of uh, debiting and crediting you also don't have to worry about indenting. Everything can start right here at the very left. Okay, if you have any questions, you are welcome to turn this off and replay it again so that you can see what's going on. The next thing we're going to look at is how you fill out the cash receipts journal.